uh, up here again today playing. Mr. Hughes from Newbridge to control the game, a man with plenty of experience, and that's not a bad thing on what promises to be a thunderous clash at Pontypool Park. Two fine, well-drilled packs on the pool with the hoops and white shorts, perhaps the better drilled, almost certainly neath the quicker round the park when they put their minds to it. And the, uh, the two scrum halves, Carl Nyack with the ball. David Bishop to mark him, Nyack comes away. Wayne Bull. Paul Thorburn, safely done. Paul Thorburn, one of three men on the field this afternoon who named by Wales's selectors, the other two being Jonathan Davis, also of Neath, and John Perkins of Pontypool. The Pontypool captain, front jumper at this line out just within the Neath 10 meter line. Really is a glorious afternoon for rugby. The autumn has been so good. The turf is magnificent, it's firm, and the, the sunlight speaks for itself. Another of Neath's young internationals, number 10, their captain, Jonathan Davis. the halfway line Jonathan Davis needs to decide to move it through Jacob and now Powell and it's not difficult for Bo to gather for Pontypool the kick half charge down the ball lands back near the halfway line Propping that we'll see in this half between a young Potterpool player on his uh, debut, Roy David, and uh, for Neath, Jeremy Hughes, Jeremy Pugh rather, and the penalty going Potterpool's way against Nyack for offside. That's a fine kick by Mike Goldsworthy for Potterpool standoff half. In the background, the magnificent sports centre here at Pontypool Park. Meanwhile, the home team pressurising Neath, very close to their goal line. Brought down by Mosley. Bishop sends it out to Goldsworthy. This is Scott Pierce, the big, strong Kiwi in the Pontypool midfield. He's well and truly held by David Jacob. And as the ball move forward, moves forward, it goes to ground, and referee Hughes takes the correct decision and we'll give the put in to Pontypool. In the middle, Scott Pierce, Pontypool's big Kiwi, 13. Well, that's a sad sight for Pontypool. Uh, Mark Brown having to leave the field at a speed which suggests that he'll be back after brief repairs. Let's hope so. Four and a half minutes into the game. Pontypool, a man short up front, and they lose one against the head to Neath. But uh, the Neath back row breaking early and becoming offside. And that's a tragic mistake by Neath, especially as they had the possession that they so badly wanted. And as the ball's put in, if you uh, look at the further end there, uh, Philip Hill, he's clearly steps offside, breaks from the scrum. This is how Neath see Goldsworthy's attempt. And you couldn't have a better view than that. The visitors are three down. The penalty struck by Mike Goldsworthy, whom we'll see a lot of kicking from this afternoon, uh, as, uh, as understudy, shall we say, to Peter Lewis, Pontypool's regular kicker, who's not on duty today. Now, just uh, limbering up, Alan Carter, whom Pontypool have put on as a replacement for Mark Brown after six minutes. This is Paul Thorburn. David Bishop, nine. That's well done by the scrum half. 
probably disappointed today at uh, having woken up and found that he was not in the Welsh 21 for the Fiji match. So Alan Carter wears 21 at the back of this line-out for Ponapool. And the locks do well. That's Goldsworthy's kick. It's difficult for Thorburn. No doubt Thorburn will have a lot of tactical kicking to deal with Ray Gravel. I should imagine so, uh, David, and uh, judging, uh, watching him coming over the field, he looked uh, a little bit cumbersome. He still, I think, uh, well, he's regained full fitness, but I think he needs a bit of sharpness. That's Mosley's work for Ponapool, down to Perkins, like clockwork. Goldsworthy, and it reaches Pierce. Good tackling by Neath, though. Powell prominent there. Away goes Pierce again. This time Thorburn is the tackler for Neath. The play moves into the Neath 22. Nyack has to be very quick indeed, and so does Jonathan Davis. At the back of the lineout, Neath have Lynn, Lynn Jones wearing number seven. Six is worn by Phil Pugh. Eight that you can see just further down the lineout is the uh, their new number eight star, Mark Jones, who already holds a B cap, having come to Neath from Tredegar. But it's Pontypool's possession. Goldsworthy moves it to Pierce. Thorburn advances. And he's well and truly gripped by the Ponypool back row. He did well to release. This is Jonathan Davis. And coming across on the left wing. Good work by Jeff Davis. And for the first time, Neath move into the Ponypool half. It's over Goff Davis's head. But it's, uh, there's not much gain with the kick. It was flat. A pretty good move by the Neath backs and Ray Gravel, they developed it off no possession at all or they were in trouble. Yes indeed, I think uh, Paul Foreman, the full back, did well because uh, when he had the ball he was under pressure, he withstood the tackle, so we see the ball coming along now. It reaches the uh, New Zealand uh, centre, Scott Pierce, and he uh, gives a little chip ahead, uh, which uh, will be taken by Paul Foreman, the, the Neath full back. And this is when I think he does well. Uh, he catches it under pressure, but then he maintains the ball. Waits for the support to come and then releases. There's still a lead ball. Tremendous ball on the Ponypool 10 meter line. It's all the way back to Goldsworthy within the 22. Bishop, Bishop really rifled that pass out. It had length and speed and it gave Goldsworthy time to pick his spot. And the crowd applauds a good line kick. A little way from the Neath 22. Scott Pierce held by Lynn Jones, seven, the Neath open side flanker. Plenty of room on the blind side, but Bishop is aiming for the corner flag. And position for the forwards. Picking his spot unerringly. Well, you can bet your boots that uh, the Neath back row at this situation will be keeping a very close eye on number nine, the man on the right, because Mosley is capable of giving possession. Adrian Jones, Benz, Perkins, dummies. The referee, will he be charitably? He won't blow Neath offside. And it's Hewish having a goal for the line. Lynn Jones tackles him. Jeremy Pugh, the prop, is there to help. And a knock-on by Ponapool. Gives Neath a let-off. Now then, this is a, a wonderful position for the home team. Look at the space on the right where Goff Davis could be a runner in. Scott Pierce is crossing to be near him. All they want is a big shove and perhaps a strike against possession. It's beyond them. And Jonathan Davis comes running bravely out of defence, only to find Levin Taylor. Pick up by Mark Jones. The feed away to Graham Davis. Slipping the ball towards the Potterpool line. That's it. Fortunately for Ponypool, one of their back row forwards has got all the way back, young Alan Davis. Alan, uh, Alan Carter. And there was help too from Roger Bitgood. 
ball is with little Carl Nyack. Bishop chases him round. Does Bishop get offside? The referee's playing advantage. Nyack goes. He's well tackled. Mark Jones drives to the line. He's held just short with Hadley. They pull it up and they've got the charge. And it turns out to be Phil Pugh who scores it. One of the neat back row forwards snatches the lead at Pontypool Park for the visitors. I don't know. And I can only say they deserve this try because they, they came from deep within the round 22 right up to the Pontypool line. Nyack breaks and good support played by the number eight, Mark Jones and Phil Pugh, the, the blonde haired number six, and he eventually goes over for a try. Well, that's good work by the scrum half plus the back row. Driving forward. The new wonderful prop, the man on his debut, Roy David, is the, uh, the loose head prop. There, the one nearer to us. Here goes Nyack. He has Elgin Reese on the right. Interception by Blood and Taylor. Coming towards the halfway line. Covered by Jonathan Davis. They're in touch. One of the most dangerous wings in Wales, Ray Gravel. Well, I played with Blair and Taylor. We see the interception coming up as the Nyack breaks there. A loose pass. Taylor's quick to spot it. And he, uh, but the thing that impressed me was the way that Jonathan Davis, the knees, the knees outside half, came across on a superb cover tackle by him. That was the last significant bit of action of the first half. We reached the break with Neath turning around in the satisfactory position of a points lead. And we rejoin the action now a little way into the second half. Phil Pugh gave up the ghost and left the field with his injury. And third from the back now, that's him, his needs replacement, he's Kevin Phillips. More used to the front row than the back row, but a very mobile, chunky kind of forward. Lynn Jones drives towards Ponapool's 22. Neath have got the bit between their teeth. Nyack bends. Jonathan Davis changes direction. He's wrong-footed. Alan Carter, this is David Jacob. Chased desperately by Scott Pearson, and just about taken. Hewish, number six for Ponapool, is back in the defence. Generous applause from the home crowd for good activity by Neath. Now, tremendous position for the All Blacks to add up to their lead. Can they apply pressure close to Ponapool's corner flag? Bishop is trying to lure a back row forward offside. Meanwhile, Hewish comes away from the set piece. That was well done by the Ponapool forwards, but Bishop's kick is for once off target. It falls to Thorburn. That's a dangerous one, dropping just outside the Ponapool line. It's been played over by Bishop. He's in big trouble. He knows he's got to play it out or concede a five-meter scrum, and the kick is not accurate. And there's a second try for Lee. The scorer is Kevin Phillips, the replacement, but the try appears to have been disallowed. The touch judge has got his flag in the air, and what bad luck. And he is the touch judge from the Neath camp, so there can be no doubting that. But very bad luck, a near miss. A bit of writing on the wall for the second half, Ray Gravel. Well, it's still exciting, and uh, that high kick by Thorman, which he chases up, but uh, a crucial mistake by... David Bishop, the front of Pools from half. Now, he should have put the ball safe, he should have put it down, but he didn't. He opted to kick. And uh, the thing is that if you kick for touch, you've got to get that ball over. Went straight to Jeremy Pugh, the lead prop, and Kevin Phillips seemingly went over, but uh, the lead line then was there on the spot, and he said that uh, his foot was in touch. Off goes the youngster Jackson for Neath. Nyack drills it back to Jonathan Davis. Jacob supplies it to Elgin Reese. Infield, Thorburn. This is Graham Davis on the 22 of Pontypool. Placing the ball forward, and the referee has seen it. Graham Davis. This is what people talk about when they mean when they talk about the glory of Welsh club rugby. The, the atmosphere is here, the exchanges are hard and touch wood very clean indeed and the enthusiasm unmistakable 
Coburn on halfway. Wrong footing, Goff Davis. That was beautifully done. That was class. Bishop advances. That was class too. Two international players meeting on the Pollapool 22. But uh, the home, the defending side getting the penalty. Brave work by number nine. Goldsworthy. Two touch. and uh, Alan Carter began running Ray Gravel straight away. Watch him at the end of the line. Well, Sidney was five or six yards ahead of the kicker and he showed that he'd be behind uh, David Bishop in, in that position there. But he's not done, but yes, he is definitely offside. Ron Perkins wearing a worried frown as the second half continues without his team being able to resume the lead. This is Adrian Jones, the young number eight, gobbled up by number five for Neith Q. Richards. 16, the replacement, Kevin Phillips, waits on the edge to challenge Bishop. It's difficult for Thorburn, he calls, he couldn't quite get there. Jacob tidies up, number 13, Elgin Reese challenges. Richards hopes can win the ball. It's a test for Wayne Ball again. He advances. He leads it to Goldsworthy. Richards leading the spearheading the challenge. He was the forward who won the ball in the first place. And he's still with the attack. And it's a drop at goal by Jonathan Davis. The referee says no. That again was superb forward work by Neath. And good discipline by Pontepool. The retreating forward, Ray Gravel, didn't, uh, didn't defend. Yes, yes uh, we'll see the ball come ba comes back to Jonathan Davis, a high upper under by him. Good work by the both centres, Powell and Jacob. They chase him. I think their mere presence allows the, the, the ball to go loose there. But then the knee forwards, they come in at pace there. They set up a platform for Jonathan Davis. So plenty of time to have a proper uh, drop goal. remaining and they definitely hold the whip hand in this game it's been a great forward effort so far by the men in black behind them the terrier like Nyack with this man Mark Jones has he opened up the event? oh yeah Nyack scores to put Neath into a lead of 8.23 that was clinically done Ray Gravel yes it was indeed and once again we see the Neath back in action, namely number eight, Mark George, who's had a, a superb game uh, this afternoon, but he works well with his command, Sanayek. We've already seen how he harasses and chases every loose ball, but the ball, now then, he works well with uh, number eight, Jones, and he just sprints through the gaps there. I think, you know, that the want to pull back over rather slow not to tackle him, but uh, the young Kamath did very well. Yes, Thorburn, will he do very well? It's a lead, it's two scores ahead, it's up to 10-3. And now to preserve this proud 100% record, Pontypool have got the score twice. Corner flag of the home team. 15 minutes of the match remaining. Neat threatening to add to their lead. Pontypool doing coolly and well. This action is within the Potterpool 22. A change at this ground of all grounds to hear the cry of neat, neat, neat instead of the normal hula. And the spirits of the neat supporters must be rising as their team remains in the lead. A lead of 10 3 and pressure all the time. And now they're moving the ball. Here goes Jacob. Who's running? Coburn, Graham Davis. That's brilliant running and that, that face of Graham Davis says it all, doesn't it? Oh, 
once again we see the knees back through the ball. And if you note that Elgin, Elgin Reese has come from the right wing, he's in the line as well. So is Paul Forbin, the knees full back. He's, the ball comes out to them. There's a man over Graham Davis, the knees left winger. Now he's got pace, he's got a bit of style, and it's a good try for Neath. A great moment then for the former secondary schools under 19 international from Pinkroyd. And here's Paul Thorburn. He's gone well outside the 22 to give the ball a big bang and draw it in. It's over the bar. And you can almost say, Ray, that uh, these must be thinking they're home and dry, are they? Well, it's, uh, you can never say that until the final whistle goes. I'm talking about the whistle. I'd like to uh, congratulate the deal who's uh, the referee. I think he's kept uh, a secure control on the game today. 16-3. The line out just inside the front of the half. Mosley, snatching, Jewish supporting. Bishop delivering. Scott Pierce receiving. Glenn Taylor in the action. But uh, Steve Powell is waiting for him. Number 12 with a very solid tackle. It stopped the Pontypool attack in its track, still in its own half. Torn away by David Jacobs. Quite unusual to see a centre with the appetite for a mall. That reminds me of you a bit, Raymond. Well, I played against David Jacobs. Uh, I'd love to see him in the well team, as a matter of fact, but uh, he's a very strong, robust player. 100% player. Tackles hard, runs hard. 10 minutes left. Leak. Points on the ball three. And Jonathan David picking his spot, but the bounce not helping him on that occasion. All goes dead. But he will not be at all unhappy, the needs captain. Not a full possession. Now let's see the caliber of some of these runners in the back. Scott Pearce, the New Zealander. This is Jonathan David. Bishop is going back at full speed. He's got Lennon Taylor close to him. Do they dare to try anything? Sent him back to the narrow side. And uh, that's a great pity. That seems to be uh, a bit careless, the Ray Grubber. That's a... Uh, Here's the tackle, Ray. Well, he, uh, Bledding Taylor goes around. Uh, Elgin Reese on the tackle. Well, it's definitely from here it looks high, but the deal here was on the spot and uh, he didn't see any malice in it. Eight minutes of the game remaining. That's Perkins foiling Mark Jones and me. On the ball, moving just outside their 22. Neath are on the ground, on the ball, and they can see the penalty. Yes, referee Hughes has been stricken, but uh, usually right. He's had a very good game. You can't, you can't have a more uh, demanding game to referee than this time. They've got to start running. And they may make mistakes. He's swarming to the breakdown. And no way forward for the elusive number nine, David Bishop. Ball goes in to Steve Jones' strike just outside Pontypool 22. Goldsworthy. Good acceleration and good, well timed pass to Gus Davis. And look at the neat cover. It reminds me of the Fijians. So there was something like 5 to 2. Outnumbering Pontypool. Lynn Jones has backed off. This is uh, Kevin Phillips. That's Brian Williams, the tough farmer from Pembrokeshire. Hugh Richards and also young Jackson are there. Now Leeds put out a man over Thorburn. Beautifully delivered pass. Craig Davis, good goal. That's the second for this electric heels left wing. And that has done it. That has knocked the last man into the coffin. And the crowd is very generous to Pontypool Park. 
A move of great class, uh, Raymond. Oh, yes, indeed. And this is a build-up there. Jonathan Davis does well. He realizes that there are two extra men outside him there to the front of pool one. Superb pick and give by Paul Thorpe. And Graham Davis is uh, taking that winger there. He's got room and he's got pace and he scores. Marvelous rugby. 